Hey there, it's Mike. Thank you for joining me for another video. This one is for you real estate photographers out there who are like me stuck in a cold weather climate. So we're going to talk about being a real estate photographer in winter. Um, and I'll give you some tips, some things that you can do both in the photography and then just kind of surviving the day, um, things that will help you. So let's deal with the photography first end of it. And the thing that you're going to notice, the struggle that you're going to have, at least on sunny days, um, but even on non-sunny days, but, but especially on sunny days, is that the sun does not make a very high or long orbit during the day. It's out shorter, it just doesn't get very high in the sky and it doesn't just travel as far. And so you're gonna have some issues if it's sunny out. Um, and for outside stuff, you're gonna have issues with the sun just not getting over the top of the house a lot. And, You'll be shooting into the house or into the sun, sorry, whether you're shooting the front or the back, depending on where it faces. And so um, one of the tricks that I do a lot of times, um, depending on, especially if it, the sun, if I'm shooting into the sun and I'm shooting the back of the house, I will actually crouch down quite a bit. I will always try to put the sun behind a house or a tree or somehow stop it from, you know, put some sort of physical blocker between the sun and my camera and so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just I'll crouch down a lot of times and I'll put the Sun you know behind the house um, if I'm you know if I'm shooting the back or the front if I'm doing something elevated obviously I don't have much of a choice um, and then you know you have to shoot into the Sun but a way to mitigate that if you absolutely have to do that of course is um, you know get a circular polarizer filter which will help darken the sky and just give you something to work with and there and there's tricks that you can do i know other photographers will put will take multiple exposures and they'll put their hand over where the sun is i've never done that uh, myself but I, you know it's a trick that can work but um so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to deal with that you know try to put a physical blocker between the sun and your camera because it's going to be pretty low in the sky many times so um, as far as indoor stuff what you're going to find is that um, because the sun it doesn't really get you know very high into the sky is that you will have it just directly pouring in light through windows and so you're gonna have a lot of glare um, you're gonna have a lot of sun bouncing the light bouncing off of snow in through your windows and so you can have window exposures that are just really blowing out and I'll find myself a lot of times I'm closing down my aperture. I'm usually at 7.1, but there'll be times where I have to close it down to like F9 or F10 even. Um, or you can lower the ISO, but I, it's just quicker for me on my settings just to adjust the aperture. What, so what that means for someone like me who uses flash, uh, your flash is gonna have to work a lot harder. You're gonna have to have a more powerful flash to make up for the fact that your aperture has closed down like that. Um, again, as far as reflections go, you could always keep that circular polarizer filter on. Um, and that'll help with that potentially, but just be aware that that you know that sun pouring right in through that window or the sun bouncing light off the snow is really going to make your windows blowing out. So you're going to have to make some adjustments for that. So those are those are my uh, those are my two tips for the actual photography end of it um, as as it pertains to that. But the 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 struggle as a, a winter real estate photographer is just just walking around in people's yards, walking around in deep snow, shooting in bitterly, you know, cold temperatures, high winds, things like that. So what can you do to, to help just kind of survive winter? And some of the stuff you may already be doing, but just stuff that I've purchased over the last couple of years that's really helped me. Because as I've gotten older, I've noticed my, my hands and my feet my fingers and my toes get get colder a lot faster it doesn't it doesn't take long and it doesn't take really cold temperatures for that to happen so some things that i do i have a pair of these which i absolutely love these are battery powered socks um, okay and they have a, like a little heating element in here um, in the top and then you would just you have one of these little sort of power packs here you put three double a batteries in here and you plug it in there's a pocket on the side of the battery and you do that for each one so you need six double a batteries and i use rechargeable batteries for my flashes when i do weddings and things like that i have end loops which are the best rechargeable batteries 
I've ever had. So it's just real easy to put six of those in start of the day and then recharge them um, at night when I get home. So these are great for, you know, obviously having in your shoes, but also if you are ever in a property where, you know, they don't have the heat set very high and you have to take your shoes off, you have these battery powered socks on. So those have, those have been a lifesaver. Um, and to go with that, I also have these gloves, which operate the same way where you just unzipper this pocket here and it has again a little cord in here that you plug in the, the same type of battery pack and it just keeps your it just keeps the the fingers you know i won't say like really warm but it keeps them from from getting cold okay so on on super bitterly cold days i will have these on now the question becomes of course when you're outside taking pictures, um, I, I can't use these to operate the camera and to take the picture. I mean, the, the fingers are just too thick. So I have, uh, there's a couple things that I do. One, I have these thinner gloves that a lot of times I just use for running, um, but they're not real warm. I will often wear these um, sort of underneath these. You know, I'll just put there, put that glove in there, and then when I need to shoot, I can take it off. It's only exposed for you know a few minutes and that's fine so i will wear those underneath the other option that i do sometimes is that i will wear these kind of mittens right here that you, that you can actually pull the top off and the fingers are exposed um, and i will actually you know just wear these throughout the day and just expose the fingers when i need to now i know they make really expensive ones for photographers where only the thumb and the forefinger are exposed and I just didn't want to pay that much. They were really expensive. And these just kind of do do the trick as well. So I have sort of three sets of gloves that I can just kind of mix and match if I need to during the day. I find that wearing these is typically enough, but if it's really cold, I have the battery powered ones. Um, some other things that you can do, I wear these, I, I will use these hand warmers, of course. I'll take these out at the start of the day before I go into the truck. They usually last five, six hours. Um, and, and put those, you know, normally in these, I can wear them or I can take them out and put them, you know, in, in even these gloves if I have to. I can put them in my pockets. I can just use them, however, to keep me warm, keep my hands warm during the day. So those come in handy. Um, and I should mention these battery powered socks will usually last me at least six hours. I'd say around six hours I get. So if I turn these on, you know, 8.30 when I leave, you know, leave them on until 2.30 when I get home, they're usually still going strong. So they will last quite a while. Same thing with the battery powered gloves. They'll do the same thing. Um, the other thing that you can do is, as well as these hand warmers that they make, they make body warmers and other things. They have toe warmers. You could put these in your boots or your shoes or whatever you're wearing. A lot of times I'll use these toe warmers as actually body warmers. I'll just take one of them and I'll, and I'll slap it on my chest. Um, and that'll just, that'll just help keep my, my kind of upper body just from getting really, really cold. So um, that's kind of how I handle the, the coldness, um, you know, and, it, and when you're, you know, when you're, when you get a lot of snow, um, what you have to be careful of is a lot of times you have to go in these backyards and you have to, you know, trudge around in the snow. I, I've been in snow that's knee deep in people's backyards, fresh after a, you know, a winter storm. Um, and so, you know, you're going to have to bring, um, you know, maybe extra socks. You're going to have to have boots, winter boots along. I mean, really big winter boots. Uh, these are just all things that you kind of have to prepare for and just kind of plan ahead when you know that, you know, you've checked the weather and it's going to be really s snowy. You're going to have a lot of snow to deal with um, or if it's going to be bitterly cold. And I've, I've been out when it's, you know, wind chills are negative 25, negative 30. Um, you know, there, there's been times where if it's a smaller vacant property, I'll, I'll just, I'll leave my truck running, um, you know, in the driveway or in, in the street. Cause I know I'm only going to be gone 25 minutes. Um, we've just had some really brutally cold days here in Wisconsin the last couple of years. So it's just preparing yourself, just making sure you stay warm, um, to get you through the day and just, you know, knowing that there's going to be some some challenges with the photography end of it because of that sun so i me personally i actually prefer not just in winter but even in warmer temperatures but especially in winter i much prefer the cloudier days you get nice soft even diffused light 
um, you know, coming down outside, it's easier to work with indoors. And typically, you know, if it's really sunny and there's no clouds in the sky, those are normally your really cold, bitter days. So I prefer to have those cloudy days. So, um, so I hope that this helped you. I hope these tips will help you get through the day, help your photography be a little easier to do. If there's anything, if you're in a cold weather and you have any tricks or things that you do, any tips, leave them in the comments so we can all learn from one another. Uh, I just advise you to stay warm and you know, get out there and enjoy some of the winter. If it's not too bad, uh, get out there and snowshoe or, or play with your kids, go sledding, whatever. But try to get through those real estate days the best you can. And uh, until I talk to you later with another photography video, I hope you have a great day. Stay warm. Bye-bye.